So this is a rough zone, a rough area that would have acted for you as resistance to trade towards your main drawing liquidity. But then it pulled back right into this scare value gap from the long gun kill zone right here. All right, so how is everyone doing? I hope you guys are having a great week. So in this video, I thought I will run you through how I really stack conference for my entries. And in this particular video, I will be talking about one specific move, one specific way of finding and stacking conference for your entry, how to be more precise and how to find those very neat opportunities when they have your full structure, your full top down vision for that trading day when you identify your liquidity pools that you are going to trade towards that you have that clear daily or lower time frame alignment or let's say that day you are in full scout trading environment so so these are some foundational or that we talked about in the previous two videos in this one we will talk more about entries notice that here we are on a five minute time frame for my entries you guys know that this is the last piece of the puzzle this is where i usually dance around from one minute to five minutes this is my this is my main play area where i refine my entries where I find my most important levels and stuff like that, what comes to taking those entries. So let's fully ignore the higher time frames, lower time frames. Our main attention goes to the execution time frames right here. Let's imagine that right after the near the net open, we expect or prize to give us a classic sell day. So long line kills on high of the day, near kills on continuation and stuff like that. We have our main liquidity pools already identified. So let's say for this day, near kill zone sell side liquidity was our main sell file liquidity pool that we wanted to see reached after price forms a Lumban kill zone high of the day. So in other words, after Lumban kill zone high forms, ideally into some opposing PDRA running all this buy side liquidity right here, we expect for the near kill zone I deal it during the RT window, which is from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is where usually the most momentum takes place during the near kill zone, where most of the liquidity sweeps happen and stuff like that. So again, opening up this day after the near the night open, after the Lomban kill zone gives us a clear high of the day. This is where let's say we expect for price to shift into bearish delivery, pushing towards our main target for the day. So in this video, we are not talking about how we find those main targets. We are not talking about the PO3 development. We are not talking about the higher time frames and stuff like that. Again, your early stacking confluence of how some of those high probability type of plays are born and how we actually stack confluence and in other words, stack positive factors on our side for the trade. So now again, as mentioned in the very beginning of this video, this time we will be talking about one main major factor of how I identify some of the areas that I will be looking to trade away from. And again, this is where we already have our full alignment from the higher time frames, lower time frames, execution time frames. Pushing towards main draw on liquidity. This is our go time. This is our prime time to start looking for developments. Then we have time of the day on our side as well. This is just perfect. So now again, you will not be going to focusing on all that. Our focus goes on this one thing that helped me to identify areas what comes to one minute time frame all the way to 15 minute time frame. Even though, as mentioned, my execution time frames are from one minute to five minute. But what comes to finding these zones, these confluence zones, this is where you can bounce around mostly from five minutes to 15 minutes. So what comes in between of these two time frames, five minutes and 15 minutes, usually I check what's happening on the 10 minute as well. And what comes to entries, as mentioned, from one minute to five minute is my play area. So now strictly talking about this price action right here, what we are seeing, notice that price gave a liquidity shakeout as it usually does. And what I'm talking about, notice that we have this consolidation right here. Price took out the buy side liquidity first giving the actual true direction for the short-term development because you can see that this whole structure is not very huge it's just five minute type of structure so i think you guys remember what we talked about in the last video when we have liquidity built up usually when they are expecting for a shakeout to happen price did this first move is usually just trapping breakout traders those traders who are looking to take long position right here and cover the lows of this consolidation. And these breakout traders get trapped because price then goes lower, takes out the sell side liquidity, and only then starts rallying higher. 
So in other words, what we had here was liquidity shakeout, probably generated liquidity, buy side liquidity right here, sell side liquidity right here. With this first move, it actually shows the real direction that price is going to be moving for the next few hours or sometimes for the whole day. It traps all of these breakout traders right here, then shoots to the downside, takes out the sell side liquidity, usually into some opposing bullish P array, and then takes out this buy side liquidity and keeps on climbing to the upside until eventually it either hits some opposing PDRA or runs some liquidity from where we start looking for down movements again. So this is what we saw here, rise building liquidity. Again, as mentioned before, the whole area between the New York midnight open to the London kill zone open is when price is still building liquidity after the TN hour window, after the Asia range window. This area right here is also when price is just building liquidity. You can see from the price action how the volume is low and price is just simply messing around right here. And then notice that with the very first candle during the long window zone open, price starts giving clear momentum right here. So it takes out the high, takes out the buy side liquidity, runs lower, takes out all the sell side liquidity, and then starts climbing higher towards this initial movements high right here, taking out the buy side liquidity, and then just keeps on pushing to the upside until eventually it forms London kill zone high of the day. So after that, again, what we usually expect, if we are looking for a classic sell day to take place, opening up on the near kill zone, we are expecting for continuation to take place towards our draws on liquidity, what comes to lower time frames. So here on the way, we have London kill zone sell side liquidity. And let's say this was our main draw liquidity for this near kill zone. So here what we have was the near kill zone sell side liquidity from the previous day. I think you can see all of this messing around, all of this movement side this right here. So we had quite a lot of liquidity inside of this whole range, inside of this whole area right here. So now coming back to the main topic of this video, what we will be talking about is this. Last expansion during the near kill zone right here. And what was the area, what was possibly signaling that price is about to reach ways into this whole area right here and then continue dropping towards our main draw on liquidity for that trading day right here. Now, as we are here on the five minute time frame inside of this area, if you would be looking for entries, of course, you could literally drop to, let's say, one minute or two minute time frame to look for more confirmation, small confluence and stuff like that. But again, we are not going to talk about this specific part here in this video. What we are talking about is how do we find those sensitive areas, those sensitive levels that price usually respects and how do we know that it is actually going to act as a confluence for us. So now what we are focusing on is again, development that happens inside of the Longman kill zone and the near kill zone right here. I think there is no surprise that during these two then those during these two windows, we almost always have quite a lot of momentum in the markets, meaning that inside of these hours, we see one-sided candles take place. And what is a one-sided candle? When we have a one-sided candle, like right here, what we actually have here is imbalance. We have a fair value gap. So we have an imbalance candle right here that, as you can see, formed right in the beginning of the London kill zone. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about fair value gaps, but at the same time, I will assume that most of you guys already know what is a fair value gap. There are a lot of videos and a lot of information. What's an imbalance point? What's a fair value gap? What's buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency and all of that. So it's half of this area focusing on the London kill zone. If we are expecting again for a sell day to take place, so automatically they are looking for long dong kill zone to form a high of the day and near kill zone give a continuation, meaning that all of this development might possibly be useful for us when we shift into the near kill zone delivery. What that means is when we have clear imbalance points, what we want to do is extend them and see if we are getting some reactions from those points. Because you remember, when an imbalance point like this right here is already filled, you can see that price fully filled this imbalance here by dropping lower, it doesn't mean that this area is not useful for us anymore. 
We still pay attention to it. We still keep our eyes on it to see if we get some reactions from that area or not. If it's not going to take place, okay, that's not a very strong area that we will be paying much attention to what comes to the near kill zone. But if we keep on seeing price react to that specific area, this is when we will simply keep it on our charts in case we see price actually find some using retail terms, support or resistance in that side. Because remember, when we have an actual imbalance point, Let's say this candle is our imbalance cam right here. So we have this fair value gap. Remember that often when price breaks it, it can act as resistance. Then it can act as resistance again. Then it can simply break above this fair value gap. Now after that, act as support. So again, using simple retail terms, when a support is broken, it starts acting as resistance. And then resistance gets broken, it starts acting as support. I think every single trader on this earth is familiar with this thing right here. But now what we are actually focusing on are the imbalance candles, are the clear imbalance candles that form during high volume windows. So again, I'm talking about London kill zone and the New York kill zone right here. And we simply pay attention to those areas in case they start sending price to the opposite side. So in other words, in this case, we are focusing on this candle right here, right at the open of the London kill zone. Again, high volume and stuff like that, everything that we need to see. Now, it doesn't mean that you completely you don't pay attention to imbalance points that happen during the Asia range or that pre London kill zone or the London lunch kill zone. We still pay attention to them. They still quite a lot of the time get respected and stuff like that. But these are the level that usually don't stay active, don't stay as sensitive areas for a long period of time. Yes, you can see that this overlapping imbalance right here and right here formed during the London lunch. Price mass reacted off of it during the near kill zone. But usually these type of areas are not the ones that act as sensitive zones for a long period of time compared to what happens during the London kill zone and near kill zone. So now again, focusing on this, this specific bullish fair value gap, notice that price ended up filling it because it took out the sell side liquidity right here and then it started pushing higher. Now, then we see price right here after the liquidity shakeout that we talked about, retrace into this area and push higher. This is when they simply look left. Do we have some overlapping fair value gaps that sent the price higher right here that formed during the long run kill zone? Not this window, not this window from New York midnight open to the open of the long run kill zone, but actually inside of the long run kill zone. So we have this at the very beginning right here. So this is the point after this rejection take place to the upside. This is when we actually start paying attention to this imbalance point right here. So now notice that price rejected it, took out the buy side liquidity, formed the high of the day for us. It started dropping, formed some buy side liquidity during the London lunch that again, usually price during near kill zone takes out. So you can see that price during the near kill zone, during the earth even though took out this buy side liquidity from the London lunch right here. But again, we are not talking about that right now. Notice that price takes out this low and there does it pull back into again, pulls back right back into this fair value gap that already acted as a sensitive area before during the London kill zone right here. And notice what happens after price rejects this fair value gap from the London kill zone again. Notice that it sends price higher taking out this buy side liquidity here of the london lunch so we have two lows that ended up taking out buy side liquidity so two proper lows right here and this is the point where we actually start looking at this fair value gap as a potential again in retail terms what we would refer to as support and resistance area right here so now once we had this drop to the downside you can see that price actually gave a very clear shift in delivery after price took out the slow it ran buy side liquidity it formed a strong high because it ran buy side liquidity interposing bearish speed race right here it happened during the near kill zones early window as well so even more complex factors right here we got this expansion to the downside all right, so from this point, after this expansion took place, as we are mourning towards our main drawing liquidity, we have enough confirmations that we are actually pushing to the downside from here, what comes to execution time frames. So if from this point, let's say we have full alignment on the daily lower time frames and execution time frames gives us this confirmation after giving low main kills on high of the day, we had first expansion, price formed a strong high during the earth, even though give a second expansion, 
right here, we are completely free. We are completely on a high probability environment. Again, if we had everything aligning on the daily and lower time frames, from here, we are talking only about execution time frames. So we are not going to be digging into the higher time frames and the whole alignment, because here we are just talking about a specific example of how a classic sell day or classic buy day, sometimes even what comes to scalping environment, how in balance points during high volume, then those act as sensitive areas for quite a long period of time, uh, how we can base our entries off of and simply use it for stacking confluence on our side. So overall, again, we had expansion one, the price formed a strong high, gave expansion two. And what we actually want to see now is for price to pull back and continue lower. Also notice that this low right here stopped right above the London kill zones sell side liquidity. So this is what we refer to as a fake low. We have lots of sell side liquidity right here. We are not going to talk much about that in this video. So from this point, once price stopped right here, we have our the sell side liquidity pull right below. Notice that it starts pulling back. And this is again there we use this sensitive imbalance points that already gave us two rejections that actually caused price to run liquidity. We simply extend that and this is the situation. Then we look for price. Remember what we talked about, high volume imbalance windows acting as support and resistance. If we talk about retail situations, notice that price right here gave one bounce. Then it gave another bounce right here. Then drops lower and treats it as resistance. To move the horse, I'll name draw on liquidity for that specific trading day. So this is exactly what happened here. This is where you could have treated this fair value gap where you hear that at first, if you would be looking at completely blank charts, you would never find absolutely any reason to base this fair value gap all the way from the London kill zone open to the mid near kill zone. I would say even the second half with near kill zone then price, which raised into it right here from a blank chart, from a blank page. It would be really hard to see this as confluence. And then we have all this stuff aligning for us. Many have this whole puzzle on our side. We have clear draw liquidity, we have clear direction, sell day, etc. And this area right here been acting as a sensitive one. This is when we can expect for price to break it and use it as resistance, which is where what comes to the entry is inside of this area. You can easily jump to your preferred execution time frame, like let's say one minute, and start looking for your entry patterns to trade towards your main draw on liquidity for that day. So this is a rough zone, a rough area that would have acted for you as resistance to trade towards your main draw on liquidity. So overall, it's not something that a lot of traders use in their trading. And I think that's a big mistake. I would highly recommend for you guys to start paying attention to these zones, start paying attention to these developments, because usually they act as a very strong contents factor. It doesn't mean that you should start using it as a complete entry type of a model or something like that. But it's definitely a very strong confluence factor to put into your whole basket when you are simply building a case for an entry. This is when, let's say, if you find and spot this type of area on two minute, five minute, let's see, 10 minutes or even 15 minute, this is where you can actually just drop to execution five frame slide, let's see, one minute, two minute. And this is where you can look for your entry patterns to take place. Sometimes if let's say this is two minutes already right here and everything else is aligning, let's see if we have even more confluence right here, like bear short the block and stuff like that. This is where you can even take an entry based on this area right here. And this is something that pretty recently happened on the euro dollar. Let me show you this example. We are not going to be fully digging into that breakdown. This is the trade that we actually ended up taking with our community. And it happened last week on Tuesday. So now I can notice what we are seeing here. London kills on high of the day. New York kills on continuation. So now we were basing our entries towards this specific development. Our main drawn liquidity at our main targets. We are sell side liquidity here, sell side liquidity here. But now we're talking specifically about entries and everything that we talked about in this video so far. Notice this imbalance point that again, we didn't pay attention to until price actually reacted higher, then gave another reaction, then broke it to the downside, gave another reaction. So basically in other words, this was the fair value gap that we were focusing on. Notice that price reacted to the upside right here, then dropped lower reacted to the upside again. Then what we had here 
was price fully breaking it to the downside and reacting running to our sell side liquidity levels. So in other words, I think you guys can clearly see how this area stayed sensitive for quite some time. And we didn't pay attention to it at all until price actually gave this first reaction, second reaction, because obviously that day we were not looking to trade to the upside. We were focusing on downside because we had a bearish daily stage. We have clear bearish draws on liquidity and stuff like that. So then price gave this first reaction. We look left. We had this imbalance. We even had this imbalance overlapping right here as well that you could have used. Tilted that price reacted higher, reacted higher again, broke it, reacted to the downside here. And then eventually our entry happened right here because what we had here was a bull trap. But obviously we were expecting for a New York deal zone condemnation to the downside towards our main draws on liquidity. So when we extend this area right here, notice that price lent slightly higher above it, but then it pulled back right into this scare value gap from the long gun kill zone right here. That the fourth entry happened already gave three rejections, two to the upside, one to the downside. This one simply doesn't count because it sliced it to the both sides as it was forming this bull trap right here, running sell side, buy side, in drop lower. Notice that it left this DPR inside of this general imbalance area as well. This bullish imbalance filled the bearish imbalance and this is where our entry was born. So I don't want to go into too many details because again, this is something that we deeply cord in our community and stuff like that. So, but overall, that's another example from a five minute point of view. Your imbalance points are simply overlapping and where you can simply just pay attention to those areas during high volume windows when price is reacting to it. This is when you can stack confluence for price to drop off towards your main draw liquidity towards your main target when you have a specific imbalance point very nicely overlapping and acting as a sensitive area. And this is what I talked about regarding this imbalance point that was also aligning in this area as well. Then we had a BPR balance price range here as well. So you can see how much imbalance was aligning inside of this area right here to take a short position right after this bull trap took place, pushing towards main draw on liquidity after seeing Lombard kill zone from a high other day and near kill zone give a continuation to the downside. So that is it for me today. I wish you good trading and we will talk very soon. Take care, guys.